second Sunday after Pentecost. Today, Jesus sends out the disciples as laborers into the harvest. In baptism, we too are anointed for ministry, sharing God's compassion with our needy world. From the Lord's table, we go forth to proclaim the good news, to heal the sick, and to share our bread with the hungry. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various places, may we be blessed by God, who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cambridge, Ontario, and I'm glad to have you join us for worship today. Although the province has now given permission for congregations to gather at 30% of their capacity while maintaining a two meter physical distancing, we are concerned about doing so. It is the quote, strong recommendation of our synodical Bishop Michael Price that our synod's congregations not contemplate initiating in-person worship experiences within our church buildings until the beginning of September at the earliest, and our council will be following his recommendation. It's with sadness that we recognize the death of Emmy Fritz a week ago Saturday. According to Emmy's wishes, she has been cremated and her remains have been spread on the Grand River. May God comfort with the sure and certain hope of resurrection, all who mourn. Thank you to our Minister of Music, Katrina Lowe, for recording a prelude and postlude for us again today. Your music is always a beautiful and important part of our worship at St. Paul's, and we appreciate your gift to us this day. Thank you for the many ways you've been watching out for one another. I'll be checking in by phone as much as I'm able with many of our members. If you need assistance, please phone the church office and leave a message, and I'll arrange for help. I check frequently for messages. At whatever time and location you are accessing this, thank you for doing so. It is good to be together in whatever way possible in this time of physical distancing. We continue now with worship. The Confession and Forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, we confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought word and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love and compassion into our hearts, that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. 
Amen. The Children's Time, a kid's book about racism by Jelani Memory. I'm so very glad that you're here again today because I know that you're bringing sunshine and joy wherever you are. In today's Bible story about Jesus, Jesus is concerned about people, so he sends out his disciples to take care of them. You may have heard that in the world lately, there's been a lot of talk about something that's bad called racism. Racism is kind of the opposite of taking care of people. Here's a video called A Kid's Book About Racism, read by the author, Jelani Memory. My name is Jelani Memory, and this is A Kid's Book About Racism. This is a book about racism, for reals, and yes, it really is for kids. It's a good book to read with a grown-up, because you'll have lots to talk about afterward. Just you, keep reading. The book won't bite. Now to introduce myself. My name is Jelani. My skin color looks like this. If you're colorblind, this is the color brown. Because my dad is black and my mom is white. Which makes me mixed or African-American, biracial, black, or a person of color. I'm proud of who I am and the color of my skin, but because of my skin color, people aren't always nice to me. Sometimes I get called names. Other times, it's worse. The person doing it might not even realize that it hurts me a lot. And when they treat me that way, it makes me feel small. You see, some people believe that having different color skin means you aren't as good as others. That's called racism. What is racism? Racism means to hate someone, exclude them, or treat them badly because of their race or the color of their skin. And it happens all the time. Not just in big ways, but sometimes it shows up in small ways, ways that are almost invisible. Like a look, a comment, a question, a thought, a joke, a word, or a belief. Racism is one of the worst kinds of mean someone can be, because racism thinks being different is bad. But being different is actually good. Like really, 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 almost there, I promise. Really, 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 1,000% good. Because being different means we have so much more to offer each other. Things like help, ideas, strength, skills, creativity, life, patience, respect, community, love, knowledge, experience, perspective, insight, diversity, wisdom, empathy, and originality. That whole being different thing, it makes us better, much better. So if you see someone being treated badly, made fun of, excluded from playing, or looked down on because of their skin color, call it racism. So if someone you see is being treated badly, made fun of, excluded from playing, or looked down upon because of their skin color, call it racism. 
and then do something about it. You can help them. You can stand up for them. You can include them in your games. You can ask them to be your friends. Because Jesus is concerned about everyone, he sends out his disciples and us to take care of others. That's what today's Bible story about Jesus is all about. Now I invite you to move into your favorite prayer posture. It may be hands up, face, hands open, facing up to receive the gift of God's uh, presence in prayer. It may be hands folded with eyes closed to help you concentrate. Or it may be crossing your arms across your chest to form an X, the first letter of Christ in Greek, and it feels like a hug from God. So now, let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for loving us and caring for us. Help us to show your love by caring for others and help us to speak up against racism. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Your parents have children's bulletins for you that you're welcome to work on at any time, even while you're listening to the sermon. The Sending of the Twelve. The mission of Jesus' followers is to continue the mission of Jesus himself. Here, he instructs his first disciples as to how they might proclaim the gospel through their words and deeds. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the dominion of heaven and curing every disease and every sickness. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers for the harvesting. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed Jesus. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the dominion of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those with leprosy, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it, if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep, in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and rulers because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother and sister will betray one another to death, and the parent the child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. 
and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada devotional book, Eternity for Today, writer Anne Galt from Ottawa reminds us that back in the 50s and 60s, people in our society attended church on Sundays. It's just what people did. Even if they didn't really believe the message that was preached there, at least they were hearing it. Fast forward to today. Sunday mornings, many folks have sports, other activities for their kids, or they want to get their errands done. Church is no longer on their radar. A few years ago, continues Anne, I told people at the stable where I kept my horse that I needed to get ready for a Lenten service. A teenager who worked there took me aside and asked what Lent was. I did my best to explain. Then with a look that told me she expected a serious answer, she asked, what's Easter? Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the dominion of heaven and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to the disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers for the harvesting. There is much need, not only in Jesus' day, but also today. There is much need for people to hear about God's grace, accepting love for all. We are told it was because of Jesus' compassion that he wanted others to know about God's great love. I think it's important for those of us in mainline denominations to hear this. If we were a fundamentalistic church, such as, say, Baptists or Pentecostals, we would be pushed to witness to those we love in order to keep them out of hell. That's a pretty compelling reason to witness. But we in the mainline denominations don't focus much on hell, and as a result, we don't feel such a great need to witness to those we love. You know, Jesus said very little about hell, but he did say a whole lot about God's love and acceptance and God's compassion. The Greek word used in today's gospel reading for Jesus' compassion is the strongest word for empathy in the Greek language. It's formed from the word for intestines, and it describes that compassion which moves people in the deepest depths of their being. The word means heartfelt mercy. So Eugene Peterson translates this phrase in the message translation. When Jesus looked out over the crowds, his heart broke. Jesus sends the apostles out in today's gospel reading because of his broken heart. He had compassion for the crowd. And that is our motivation for witnessing compassion rather than avoidance of hell. Can we begin to feel that same concern, that same compassion, the same empathy and the same love that Jesus felt? And can our deep compassion then move us to witness to God's life-changing love? Out of compassion for the crowd, Jesus sends the apostles. But you know, there's nothing unique or specific, specifically special about them. This group of disciples is a rather strange bunch. About the only thing they seem to have in common is that they're all Israelites. Matthew is a tax collector working with the Romans, while Simon is a zealot plotting to overthrow the Romans. Here again is a sign that God values diversity. 
Another common element, I suppose, would be their ineptitude at being disciples. Peter will deny Jesus, Judas will hand him over, and Thomas will struggle to believe. James and John will argue for top spot in Jesus' dominion. While the remaining disciples were so unremarkable that we know virtually nothing about them. Yet it is these incompetent, unremarkable disciples that Jesus sends to care for the world for which Jesus has deep compassion. If they were deemed to be suitable, capable witnesses, then maybe witnessing is something that even you and I could do. So what is it that these disciples are called to do? What's their task? What's their message? Well, let's start first with what it's not. It's not about saving lost souls by instilling a correct belief system. It's not about scaring people with threats of hell. It's not even primarily about eternal salvation and the afterlife. Look at the list of things that Jesus gives them authority to do. As you go, directs Jesus, proclaim the good news, the dominion of heaven has come near. And manifest that dominion, make its values visible by curing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing those with leprosy, and casting out demons. Jesus calls his disciples to address the physical conditions that cause suffering in people's lives here and now. These actions of caring and healing proclaim, show, point out, demonstrate that God's dominion is here now. These actions of caring and healing witness to Jesus' compassion. There's a wonderful legend about St. Francis, the gracious and kind 13th century monk, who one day informed his companions that he planned to go into the nearby village on a preaching mission. He invited a novice to go along. On their way, they passed an injured man, and Francis pro promptly stopped, saw to the poor fellow's needs, and arranged medical care for him. They went on and soon passed a homeless man who was near starvation. Again, Francis stopped his journey and ministered to the hungry homeless man. So it went through the day, people in need, Francis lovingly caring for them as best he could until the sun was low in the sky. He told his novice friend that it was time for them to return to the monastery for evening prayers. But the young man said, Father, you said we were coming to town to preach to the people. Francis smiled. Then he said, my friend, that's what we've been doing all day long. You see, when we care for another, we are doing the very work of God. Can you do that? Yes, you can. And then Jesus points out the difficulties they will encounter when they seek to be gracious and caring. They will not always be welcome and they will meet resistance. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, says Jesus, don't react with anger or hatred. Don't seek to dominate them. Simply shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. They will hand you over, flog you, and you will be dragged before governors and rulers because of me. Brother and sister will betray one another to death, and the parent, the child, and the children will rise up against the parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. Jesus points out the difficulties they will encounter when they seek to be gracious and caring. They will not always be welcome, and they will meet resistance. So go only to Israel, counsels Jesus. It won't be easy, so start with the people you know. Jesus points out the difficulties we will encounter when we seek to be gracious and loving. We will not always be welcome, and we will meet resistance. But we are called and enabled by God to go and make a difference here and now in the lives of people we know. 
we may not be able to do everything and solve everybody's needs, but we can do something. You probably already know the story told about two men walking down a Mexican beach talking with one another. They could see another man in the distance. As they got closer, they saw that he was bending over, picking something up and throwing it into the ocean. The closer they got, then they noticed that he was one of the natives. There were starfish on the beach, which were left by the outgoing tide. The native was throwing them back out into the ocean where they could swim away. One of the two men asked him, what are you doing? The man replied, I'm throwing the starfish back out to sea. If they don't get back into the deeper water, they will die. The other man replied, well, I understand that part, but look at this beach. It's covered with starfish. There must be thousands stranded out there. How do you feel that this will make a difference? The native bent over, picked up another starfish, hurled him out to sea, and with a smile on his face said, made a difference to that one. Out of compassion for the crowd, Jesus sends the apostles. There's nothing unique or particularly special about them. Jesus commissions them to make present the dominion of God by loving and caring actions that make a difference here and now in people's lives. Jesus points out the difficulties they will encounter when they seek to be gracious and caring. They will not always be welcome and they will meet resistance. Go only to Israel, counsels Jesus. It won't be easy, so start with the people you know. Can you do that? Can you go out and take care of the people in your lives, showing them God's love in your loving, caring actions? Can you do that? Yes, you can, with God helping you. Go and make a difference. Amen.
The prayers today are adapted from those prepared by Pastor Rick Price of Lunenburg Lutheran Parish in Nova Scotia. Responding to the promise that we will be heard, we offer our prayers to God, saying, God who is with us, and responding, hear our prayer. God who comes to us, God who sends us, life seems to have become more divided and isolated than ever. It's overwhelming and we can feel so very inadequate. We would prefer to hide. God who is with us, hear our prayer. God who comes to us, God who sends us, Jesus asks us to go, but all we can feel is our lack, lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, lack of answers. We would prefer to wait until we feel ready. God who is with us, hear our prayer. God who comes to us, God who sends us, you call us into your church, feed us with yourself, and send us into the world. We would prefer to stay in our buildings and in our homes. Remind us that you go too. God who is with us, hear our prayer. God who comes to us, God who sends us, people we know are sick, our community is sick, our world is sick, sick with illness, sick with racism, sick with greed. You call us to share your healing work. Therefore, we remember all who are heavy on our hearts, whom we name before you. We pray especially for the family and friends of Emmy Fritz as they mourn her death. God who is with us, hear our prayer. God who comes to us, God who sends us, we recognize that the need is great. It feels overwhelming and we are afraid. Free us to go, free us to love and serve, free us to learn on the job. God who is with us, hear our prayer. God who comes to us, God who sends us, we give thanks for the holy people who have gone before us, especially Emmy. Sustain us in your mission until that day you bear us up to join the saints in light. God who is with us, hear our prayer. We pray this in the name of our risen and living Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And now we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share that peace. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.